Hello, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, and welcome to the video. <laughs> uh, welcome to Relieving Stress with Simple Techniques, Crystals, and Essential Oils. If you are watching this on replay, I am going to give it just a moment to see if anybody jumps on live. Um, so if you are watching this on replay, just fast forward for a moment. I'm kind of trying to get my camera angle set up properly anyway, too. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, we will give it just a moment. But I'm really excited to talk to you guys today about this because these are super simple techniques and utilizing things like crystals and essential oils. Those are easy tools to, um, you know, really amplify your stress relieving practice. So let me log on to Facebook as well because sometimes comments and stuff do not show up on my phone, but they will show up on... Um, oh no, hold on, okay, I see somebody's on, oh no, it says, it's Haley, and she cannot find where I'm live, <laughs> hopefully, again, it shows that there's somebody here, but it's not showing who, so apologies for the delay here, I just want to make sure, <clears throat> everybody can access this. Oh, I was just commenting to you, Haley. <laughs> All right, awesome. Perfect. Okay. Well then, so we will get into it. All right, so stress. Everybody has it. <laughs> stress is extremely prevalent in our society, in the world, but especially in our society. Um, you know, in like North America and the Western world. As adults, we tend to be way overworked, uh, underpaid, <laughs> lots of things going on. You know, now more than ever, our kids have so many more activities and stuff going on as well. Um, so, plus there's just a lot going on in the world <laughs> today that make people just very stressed. <clears throat> so, if you are a very stressed person, you are not alone, it's extremely common. So, I kind of wanted to go over some stress facts, some, um, hi Misty, hello, hi Michelle. Um, so I kind of wanted to just go over a little bit of stress facts and kind of what it can do to the body, because it's pretty, uh, incredible <laughs> what it can do to the body. Not incredible in a good way either. Uh, <laughs> so I want to discuss that, and then I'm going to share some simple techniques that you can do to release your stress, um, some ongoing practices that you can do, as well as, things that you can do in the moment when you're really feeling stressed out. And then we will cover essential oils that you can incorporate into your daily life to bring down your stress levels, as well as some crystals that you can use. So make sure that you stay until the very end because I do have a little giveaway goodie for people that will stay to the end and I will announce that at the end of the video. And while I'm talking, if you have any questions about anything or you need more clarification on something, go ahead and comment below. Um, and I will be checking the comments and I will love to answer any questions that you guys have. Let me take a drink really quick. Mm. Okay. Hello, Monica. It's my mama. Uh, we were just getting started. <laughs> Peace. What's up, mama? All right. So stress, everybody has it, <laughs> but when you have a lot of stress frequently, that's when it can really start causing problems with our bodies. Not only our bodies, our minds, our spirit, and our bodies. So when you have a lot of stress, it's called actually the silent killer because it really, can, it literally can kill people. Having continued high levels of stress in your life can lead to blood pressure issues, cholesterol problems, heart disease, heart failure, heart attack. It's really, really scary. So it's really important to, and I'm not trying to say this to stress you out more, because <laughs> um, I, I was reading about all these things, I'm like, do I really want to go over all of this? Because this might stress people out more. But I think it's important to know exactly what it is that stress does to our bodies. It's more than just being stressed and being like in a miserable mood. Uh, it really affects us down to like a cellular level um, and a spiritual level as well. And so I kind of just wanted to share this to, you know, kind of open your eyes to why it's so important to focus on relieving your stress and making it a priority. Because a lot of people too, some of the um, techniques and stuff that I'm going to mention, I've mentioned to people before and they say, well, I don't have time for that. Okay, but do you have time for a heart attack? Do you have time for um, 
you know, <laughs> high cholesterol? Do you have time for all of these other issues that stress can give you? I don't think so. Uh, so, <clears throat> yes, I'm looking at my notes over here. So, stress can literally change, like I said, it stre like affects you down to a cellular level. It literally can change, start to change your cel cellular makeup being stressed constantly, which is crazy. Um, it affects, let me see. Yeah, it is estimated that stress is the cause of approximately 30% of infertility problems. That's huge, you guys. 30% of infertility problems is because of stress. Um, in females, stress affects the maturation and releasing process of the human egg, uh, and it leads to spasms in the fallopian tube and uterus. So that means if you're a really stressed out woman, even if the egg gets fertilized, like released and fertilized, it has a hard time implanting into the uterus because you're stressed out. Stress causes your uterus to like contract. That's craziness. It's so mind boggling to me. Um, stress can cause weight gain. Stress can cause body aches and pains. Stress can cause um, IBS issues, issues with digestion. It can make your hair fall out. It causes premature wrinkles. <laughs> it's pretty intense. Uh, it messes with your sleep, and then that's a whole other thing um, because not getting enough sleep also increases all of these negative things that I'm talking about. So, all right, now that I've freaked you out <laughs> about what stress can do to your body, let's talk about ways to relieve stress because the good news is it can be done. Um, very easily too. I mean, it, I will say it takes practice and it takes diligence and you do have to make your stress relief a priority in your life because you deserve to have less stress. You deserve to have these things. Hello, Renee. You deserve to feel less stressed. <laughs> um, so these things, while they are easy techniques, you do have to, you know, you can't just do these techniques one time and expect that the stress in your life is going to go away. It's an ongoing thing. Hello, Miss Chris. It's an ongoing thing that you have to kind of be aware of. But once you kind of have it in your mind and you make these things a daily practice, they become kind of second nature uh, and you don't really have to think about it as much. <clears throat> so let's get into some of the techniques. And all of these techniques, I'll share how you can add the crystals and essential oils to the techniques also in a little bit later in the video. All right, so number one, I'm sure everybody's heard of meditating. Meditating is like the number one way to relieve stress, anxiety, tension, depression, all of these, you know, negative emotions and feelings that we have. Meditation is the number one way to take care of those things. I mentioned stress literally changes you on a cellular level. Uh, meditation literally changes your programming in your mind. They've done studies on this. I mean, the monks have, <laughs> Tibetan monks and stuff have been telling us these things for years, thousands of years, um, but scientists have now actually proven that a daily meditation practice rewires your brain and instead of your brain immediately going to like the stressed zone, meditation helps your brain kind of bypass that stress zone and go more towards the, you know, relaxed quote unquote zen state. Not that you'll like be walking around, you know, like a Tibetan monk just sitting there um, every day and you're not going to get stressed, but it helps you have the, um, the tools and the wiring in your brain to more easily come down from stress and to get not as worked up as quick. Yes, Monica, this is why I tell you to meditate all the time. That's my mom and I get on her all the time about meditating. So meditating doesn't have to be sitting there, you know, legs crossed on the floor, hands up like this, although this can help. These are called mudras, totally different video. Um, you know, um, and thinking of nothing. It doesn't have to be that stressful. <laughs> you can just even, and you don't have to sit there for like hours a day either. You can start out just five minutes a day meditating. And all you need to do to meditate, just sit comfortably in a chair, whatever, feet flat on the ground, <clears throat> and just focus on your breathing. Set your little timer for five minutes. Hopefully your alarm is something not like super jarring. I have my meditation alarm. It's kind of like just these little chimey bells so it doesn't like jolt me out of my meditation. Um, so set your timer for five minutes and then just sit there, your hands relaxed, not clenched or anything, and close your eyes and breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and in through your nose. And literally you can tell yourself, I do this sometimes if I have a lot going on in my mind, and just tell yourself breathing in, breathing out. And you can say that in your head and that helps you to stay focused on your breath and in your body and in that moment. 
And if your mind does start to wander about, you know, picking up the kids later in the day or the grocery list you need to do, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up. Just acknowledge that you had that thought and then kind of gently pull yourself back to breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. And just do that for five minutes a day. And that right there can really have an impact. You wouldn't think that just five minutes of just quieting your mind, closing your eyes, turning the phone off, turning the TV off, and breathing for five minutes could really make a difference, but it's pretty incredible when you do that daily. Um, so, oh, hold on one second. I'm seeing something pop up on my screen. Okay. Um, it can really, really help. And then you can move it up, you know. Say you've done five minutes of breathing and meditation for ten days straight and you're feeling pretty good about it. Move it up to seven minutes, then ten minutes. Ideally, uh, you do want to do like 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening. But again, if that stresses you out thinking that you have to meditate 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at night, just do the five minutes a day. Focus on what you can do and don't like make yourself feel guilty or overwhelmed about, you know, not being this meditating guru <laughs> or something. Um, so that's one of the techniques, just focusing on your breathing. Another technique is just being mindful. So this is when you're doing the dishes. This is, this is probably one of the easiest meditations too, and also the hardest sometimes. So while you're just doing the dishes, instead of doing the dishes and again, thinking about what happened yesterday, what happened two weeks ago, what you need to do next month, just really be aware of what you're doing in the moment. Be aware of the water running. Be aware of your hand scrubbing the dishes. Just being really in the moment because a lot of our stress comes from things that happened before and things that we are preparing for. That's where pretty much most of our stress happens. Uh, granted, you know, you are stressed in the moment with things, but majority of the stress is from the past or the future. So when you're mindful and you're focusing on what is happening right then and there, you're not worrying about what happened yesterday. You're not worrying about what you need to do tomorrow and that relieves your stress right there. So being mindful. Uh, Another, you can do the meditation, turn on some music or do a guided meditation. I have a few guided meditations on my uh, YouTube channel, but you can also just look on YouTube for different various guided meditations. They have, you know, 10 minute guided meditations. There's hour long guided meditations. So those are really helpful. Also walking meditations are good. Uh, Lord, I'm trying to meditate now. I am focused on you and my stepson has ESPN on and his phone watch. Oh my gosh. That's a lot going on. See, that's not being very mindful. <laughs> but, I mean, it happens. We all do that. I do that so often. And But it's when you catch yourself. Because I've been watching TV, and I'm scrolling through Facebook, and I'm like, what am I doing? Like, focus on one thing, even if it's TV or Facebook. At least just focus on the one thing. But it, it can be hard. But these are the things just being mindful of your mindfulness. <laughs> uh, so another walking meditation, or walking meditation, meditation you can do is walking meditation. And this is kind of like mindfulness. Uh, you're getting the benefits of walking, physical exercise. Ideally, you want to go walk maybe in the woods because then you're getting the benefits of being out in nature. Um, and being just mindful of walking, you know, noticing how your feet feel as they touch the ground, noticing the trees, noticing the birds, just noticing everything that's happening around you. You can also pair your breathing with your walking. So, you know, right foot inhale, left foot exhale, right foot inhale, left foot exhale. Um, Obviously, you'd probably want to do a slower pace <laughs> to match your breathing because you don't want to hyperventilate. Um, so those are really easy ways. So, yeah, meditation doesn't have to be something scary, crazy. They can be easy, short things that you can incorporate into your day. Everybody has five minutes a day. I don't care who you are. You have five minutes a day. Maybe you need to wake up five minutes earlier or go to bed five minutes later, but you have five minutes. Maybe on your lunch break, you don't scroll through Facebook. You put your phone away and do breathing for five minutes. Uh, <clears throat> so that was technique, well, several techniques, number one. Uh, another thing that you can do is have weekly self-care dates with yourself. So remember how we said you need to make your stress relief and a priority because you are worth it. Your family probably wants you around. They don't want you to have all those gross, scary, physical things that can happen from stress. So your self-care is not selfish, it is a priority. So schedule it with yourself. If you literally have to write down a date for yourself in your planner or put it in your phone 
something, schedule just even an hour once a week that is just for you. Let your kids know, let your significant other know, let your roommates know, let your dog know <laughs> that this is your time. And this is time not to just, you know, sit in the bathtub and again, scrolling on Facebook. This is the time to put the electronics away and really do something that feels good for you. So maybe it's putting up a nice bubble bath and candles and reading a book in the bath for an hour. Maybe it's going to get your nails done. Maybe it's getting a massage if these are things that you can afford. Maybe it is just going to the woods and sitting in the woods for an hour. Do something that is feels good and nourishing to you and makes you feel good and special. And during that time, try not to think of what you should be doing, quote unquote. You know, don't think about what you need to be doing at work or what happened yesterday. Really just enjoy the moment of treating yourself. So another thing is learning to say no. This is a big one for a lot of people because, uh, you know, especially if you're a giver and a nurturer and you want to do things for people, it can be very hard to say no because you don't want to make people mad. You don't want to upset people and you want to be there for them. But saying no can be so freeing and so stress relieving because think of all the times that you're saying yes, yes, yes. You're adding more onto your plate. You're just piling it on, piling it on every time you say yes, that you'll do something for somebody. So it is okay to say no sometimes and you don't have to offer people an explanation either. You know, no, I'm sorry. I can't do that today. You don't need to go into reasons why. Well, I'm really working on my stress and I just have a lot going on and blah. you don't need to explain. You don't owe anybody an explanation for saying no and not doing something. <laughs> so learn to say no. That one could be kind of difficult, but it can totally be doable. Um, a couple of other things. These two kind of, they kind of go together and then they kind of clash as well. So the other one is learn to delegate. So rather than trying to take everything on and do it all yourself, delegate some things. You know, if the housework is stressing you out and you have kids, assign them some chores to do. Learning to say no is the best decision I could have made. It's still hard sometimes. Yes! High fives to you, Haley. That's amazing. I love that. It is. It can be very difficult sometimes, especially if you have people in your life that try to make you feel guilty for saying no. But you just have to remember that if, if they're upset about it, that's their issue. It's not your issue. You can't make people feel happy. You can't make people feel good. You need to stand up for yourself and for your own, you know, mental health and feelings and emotions. So I'm proud of you for doing that, Haley. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, so delegate, you know, ask your husband if he could maybe pick up the slack on the laundry for the week or something. Uh, you know, at work, if you have people, coworkers, ask them if they could help out with some things. Learn to like take some things off your plate, kind of. And the other thing is learn not to control everything. This is a big stress for people is they want to control everything. And that's where like people who usually want to control everything don't like to delegate things because they want to control the outcome. They want to control the end result and they don't trust anybody else to do it because they think they do it the best. So learn to release some of that control or on the flip side, some people delegate a little too much and well, here's the thing with delegating. When you delegate something to somebody, just let them do it. You can't then delegate something and then like, you know, be on their shoulder monitoring what they're doing because then that's not really relieving you of the stress. You just got to delegate and then, you know, trust that they're going to take care of it and handle it. And so what, you know, if you delegate the laundry, who cares if somebody doesn't fold it quite the way you do? Who cares if they put the towels away differently than you do? At the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so yeah, learn to just let go of control. Let go of the outcome of things. You know, you can't control how people act. You can't control what people do. You can't control what people say. So once you kind of have that in your mind and you release that, it's a lot less stress in your life. Uh, let's see. All right, I have a couple more techniques that you can do. So obviously the typical ones, uh, diet, physical exercise, getting out into nature, those things really, I mean, those are typical things for stress relief because it makes a difference. Uh, physical, even again, if it's just like a 10 minute walk around your block after dinner, that helps get you moving. Uh, you know, say it's the end of the day and you haven't done anything physical, get on the floor and do some push-ups, do some crunches, do some lunges, <laughs> you know, for 10 minutes. Do something to get your body physically moving and those endorphins going. And just like the meditation, you know, it can be short. It doesn't have to be an hour long workout every single day. Uh, Virgo here, but I want it done right and not have to go back and fix it. 
<laughs> and I say no and then reason it for 15 minutes. Okay, yes, yeah, see, and those that's stressful. A lot of us do that. Uh, you know, you want it done how you want it done. But that's where you kind of have to have a lot of good inner dialogue with yourself and tell yourself, okay, I, would I prefer that it was done this way? Yes. You know, is the world going to fall apart? No. And you just kind of have to work with yourself and kind of talk to yourself to talk yourself out of it, <laughs> kind of. Because <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm like, oh, why isn't this put away like this? And then I have to catch myself like, okay, it doesn't matter. At least it was done and I didn't have to do it. <laughs> and yes, and no, don't reason. You don't have to reason at all. I mean, if somebody asks, well, why? Just say point blank. I have a lot going on right now. I don't want to take this on. You know, it's never wrong to be honest. And you don't have to, you know, justify why you're feeling this way. You don't have to go into why you're feeling stressed and why you think adding this extra thing will make you more stressed. You don't owe anybody that. You know, so, and don't feel bad about it either. Don't let people make you feel bad. So yeah, physical movement, um, going on walks, sitting outside. These are all really good stress relief things. Putting your feet, your bare feet into the earth now that it's getting warmer here in the northern hemisphere. Uh, getting outside and you know rubbing your feet in the grass, planting your feet on the earth. That can really help to flush out um, the excess energy in your body and it goes absorbed into a beautiful mother earth. Um, so that's really, really good. Try to walk around barefoot as much as you can outside. And let's see, a gratitude journal. I have two more things. Gratitude journal is really excellent. So just at night, you can just answer these three questions and write them in a journal. You can ask yourself, what made me happy today? What made me proud? Or what made me feel accomplished? And what am I thankful for? And write those in a journal each night before you go to bed. And this just really helps you to kind of, again, rewire your mind instead of thinking of everything that's going wrong and stressing you out and freaking you out and what needs to be done and all these things. It gives you a moment to, number one, be mindful because you're in the moment. And then number two, it helps your mind to start to point out the things in your life that are going good and the things in your life that are relaxing and the things in your life that make you feel good and not stressed out. And then you'll notice, too, the more frequent you are with this gratitude journal, You'll start to notice throughout the day, just randomly, you'll start noticing the things that make you feel good and the things that you're thankful for and the things that are making you happy and the things that are, you're proud about. Uh, and that will start to take over your mind rather than all of the little things that are stressing you out. And then finally, taking care of your environment, having, um, you know, making sure that your things are relatively organized, things are put away. And making sure that your home is, um, the energy in your home is good. And so for that, you can do sage. You can light some sage. If you do not like the smell of sage or you don't like the smoke, you can always create a um, smudge spray using essential oils and water. And I can post a recipe for that after this video. And so with the sage, with the smoke, or the essential oil spray, you just go around your house and you can spray the oil or waft, waft, waft <laughs> the smoke around your house. And you always want to have a window cracked to kind of let the negative, stressful, heavy energy have a way to escape your house. But just go through each of your rooms and either spray or use the smoke and really just envision all of the stress and heavy energy just leaving your house. And it really does just instantly make you, your house feel, the whole, your whole space just feel so much lighter. This is especially good to do if you and your family have been really stressed or there's been an argument in your house or something like that, it's really good to do this. Um, and then ideally you also want to do this like once a month. So, <coughs> I'm talking, talking, talking. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Do you guys have any questions? I'm going to try to hurry up because I feel like I've been blabbering. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to get into the essential oils and then we'll talk about crystals. So before we get into which oils um, I personally love for stress relief, I want to tell you that the oils that I use, I personally use doTERRA, where's the thing, there we go, doTERRA essential oils because I absolutely love the company and what they stand for and how they harvest their oils. So doTERRA, well with essential oils, you want to harvest the plant in its native region. When plants are growing where they are native, 
they're usually more potent and stronger and healthier, which in turn then means your oil will be stronger, more potent and healthier. So doTERRA works rather than trying to have their own farms here in America and harvest plants that way. They work directly with farmers in these different countries, um, which is really incredible. So not only does that ensure that your oils are going to be high quality, it's also helping out the farmers in these countries. They pay these farmers a fair wage, which is amazing. So a lot of these farmers, a lot of the they're in like really poor countries and they can't afford much. And then now doTERRA comes in and they're paying these farmers a fair, awesome wage and they're giving them nice working conditions. Uh, and then also they have their co-impact sourcing and helping hand, or healing hands foundation. So in these impoverished countries, doTERRA then puts more money back into the people and the areas by building schools, providing fresh water, um, building hospitals and stuff. It's really, really incredible what they are doing for the people. And they also have, I think it's like doTERRA works exclusively with 96% of their farmers, meaning the farmers only work with doTERRA. So when we say you can like the doTERRA lavender is like only doTERRA lavender, you can't get this lavender anywhere else. That's true because you're only getting from the farmers that doTERRA works with. <clears throat> and they're very, very particular with their testing, all that good stuff. They really, um, they do third party testing and everything to make sure that what is in your bottle is literally 100% pure, high quality, therapeutic grade essential oil. Like the crap that you get at the grocery store, it may say pure, but it's not. Because unfortunately there are not a lot of regulation, <clears throat> regulations with oils. And they can only be like a few drops of essential oil and then the rest is synthetic fragrance and they're still allowed to label at the grocery store 100% pure essential oil. And that's really dangerous. Um, with doTERRA oils, you can get onto their website and see exactly where the oil was sourced from. You can see the test results on the oil. So they're extremely transparent with their high quality. So that's why I personally use doTERRA. <laughs> All right, so essential oils, they work by uh, not only like when you use it topically, working on your body system, but also they immediately, I mean, you've probably smelled something and it immediately takes you back to a memory or immediately makes you feel a certain way. That's because the essential oils, it goes directly to like the, um, yes, I love it, says Michelle. Oh, Haley says, can you please elaborate a little more on the gratitude journal? I have a hard time writing things down sometimes. Oh, yes. So the gratitude journal, just, you know, any notebook will do. And just each night, make this part of your bedtime routine, which will also help with uh, falling asleep better and stress relief because the more sleep we have, the less stress we are. So schedule it in for yourself, you know. Let yourself know that five, ten minutes, you're going to go to bed five to ten minutes earlier. And just sit down and you can just ask yourself those three questions. Uh, we do this with my kids around the dinner table. Um, I'm trying to get them in the mindset of gratitude. <laughs> so just ask yourself, what made me happy today? And write down something that made you happy. You don't even have to write a ton. If you just want to write, you know, a few things. What made me happy today? I got to sit outside and drink some tea in the sunshine. I, you know, what made me happy today? I went to lunch with my friend and we laughed and laughed and laughed. That made me happy. Um, and then also too, if you want to elaborate more, you can elaborate more on that. But you can just make little lists or even just write down one thing. Uh, so what made me happy today? What made me proud or feel accomplished? Even if it's something like I put away a basket of laundry. <laughs> I've literally written that down some days. And I feel accomplished that I put away the damn laundry because, you know, sometimes it's days like that. Uh, you know, maybe you did a Facebook Live video and you feel proud and accomplished of that. Um, and then the third thing is, what are you thankful for? And these are usually things you want to make them more, um, you know, like the more meaningful things. So, like, I'm thankful for, you know, the person at the grocery store that held the door open for me. I'm thankful that I was able to take a hot shower today. I'm thankful that I'm sitting here under electricity writing in this book like little things like that and these each day do these and try to come up with something different each day like especially the things that you're thankful for um try to come up with something different each day so i hope that helps <clears throat> all right so yeah oils they work directly they instantly 
can change your mood. Literally just smelling a scent can change your mood. So you can do that. You can either just smell right from the bottle. When you're feeling stressed out, just smell right from the bottle. You can put it in your diffuser. Uh, you can even have, they have diffuser jewelry where you put a few drops of the oil on the jewelry and you wear it as a necklace. And that way you smell the smell periodically through the day. Uh, you can have a roller bottle like this. This is essential oils mixed with a carrier oil, like coconut oil. And you can rub this on yourself each day. Uh, you can even put a couple drops in your hand, rub your hands together and breathe in. And that really works well, pairing that with your, uh, your breathing. Oh, I forgot to cover that one. If you're in the moment of stress, uh, stop <laughs> whatever you're doing in the moment of your stress. I mean, hopefully you're not driving or something. Close your eyes and do five to 10 deep breaths, breathing in through your nose and exhaling out through your mouth slowly. And um, I personally like to envision like white light, breathing in and filling up my body. And on the exhale, I like to envision like dark smoke or something coming out of my mouth, symbolizing like the stress and the tension leaving my body. So that's a really, really excellent technique, like right in the moment when you're feeling stressed. And that's when you can pair it with some oil. You know, you can hold, I do this all the time when I'm stressed with my kids. I open a bottle of oil and I just hold it here. And it really like, I mean, pretty much just even one smell and one deep breath like that can you immediately feel your body just lighten up and just melt almost. <laughs> um, so those are some ways that you can use the oils. Now, some of my favorite, favorite, favorite oils for stress, re stress re relief, <laughs> wild orange. This one is really, really excellent. And this one is very, uh, you know, it's a mild scent as well. It's very uplifting. Then we have lavender. Lavender is, this is also really good for sleep. So if you're somebody who's really stressed out and you have a hard time going to sleep, lavender, serenity, and vetiver. These three oils, lavender, vetiver, and serenity. Serenity is a blend exclusive with doTERRA. These three oils would be really, really good for right before bed. You could apply them to the bottoms of your feet. You could even put some in a spray bottle and spritz your, um, you know, your linens before you go to sleep. Or just again, just smell it out of the bottle and do some nice deep breathing before you get into bed. You can smell it while you're doing your journaling. Uh, so lavender, vetiver, and serenity. These ones tend to make people sleepy. So, um, you know, some people may not enjoy smelling or using serenity, lavender, or vetiver like during the day, like if you're at the office or something and you're stressed out. These may make you sleepy and you may not want to use them. Uh, those may be better for the evening, but these next oils, they, I haven't had any issues with sleepiness. So like wild orange, that would be fine to use during the day. Um, patchouli, if you like the smell of patchouli, <laughs> which I personally love it, patchouli is very grounding. It really helps you to just feel, uh, you know, secure and not stressed. <clears throat> Excuse me. So patchouli is another good one. And then another essential oil blend from doTERRA is Balance. This is the grounding blend, like it's literally called the grounding blend. And this just really helps you to um, have your energy just balanced <laughs> and grounded and stable. And then we have Citrus Bliss. This got me through the winter blues and the stress of being cooped up winter. This one is amazing and just feels so uplifting. It just makes you feel just instantly happy. <clears throat> Balance and uh, Citrus Bliss together are my absolute favorite. I apply them every day. I have them in a, um, a roller ball like this, and I apply them every day. And it really helps with the stress relief. And then finally, there is uh, Peace from doTERRA, and it's another essential oil blend. And it also really just helps you to feel calm and peaceful. I had this and one of my crystals in the car yesterday because my kids were making me insane. So I gave myself a timeout in my car outside. <laughs> holding one of my crystals. I applied this to my arms. I sat there and I smelled it and I did some breathing holding my crystal and it was good. So yeah, basically all the oils, pair them with your breathing, pair them with your mindfulness, uh, pair them with the techniques that we talked about at the beginning. So some crystals that you can use for stress relief um, are rose quartz. Ro this is my go-to. This is actually the crystal I have in my purse. I always have this with me. 
and whenever I'm stressed, I usually just take out the crystal and I'll rub the crystal and I hold it and I do my breathing. I usually, because I have this in my purse as well, so I'm usually pairing rose quartz with peace, do breathing, smell the oils, rub the crystal, and it makes you feel better. Rose quartz is excellent for the heart chakra <clears throat> and it's just a very, very calming, soothing, loving crystal. This is probably my favorite type of crystal is rose quartz. I have some like in every room of my house. It's just, this is excellent. Can't say anything else about it. It's just the best. <laughs> so you can get a, a smooth crystal like this and keep it in your purse to rub and hold on to, or you can have, you know, towers, whatever. So rose quartz, clear quartz is another excellent one. This is one of my absolute favorites. And you can program your crystals, which is basically when you get a crystal, ideally you want to cleanse it, so sage it, or you can sit it under the moonlight. Those are my favorite ways to cleanse crystals. So you get your new crystal and it's cleansed, and then you can hold it in your hand and just put your intent into it. So if you have this crystal and you want this clear quartz to specifically be for stress relief, hold the crystal. And you can even say, you know, I'm programming this to provide me stress relief. And then when I'm using a crystal for a particular, programming a crystal for a particular intent, I like to hold it, close my eyes, and put the feeling that I'm wanting the crystal to do into it. So for instance, if this was for stress relief, holding your crystal and just really feeling what it feels like when you aren't stressed. Feel what it feels like to be relaxed and to be calm and to feel collected and to feel happy and to feel light. Put those feelings and that energy into the crystal, and then when you are stressed, grab your crystal, and it will be kind of infused with that energy and that intent. So clear quartz is excellent. You can do that. Clear quartz, you can use it for anything. Program it with any sort of intention. Clear quartz to help you sleep. Clear quartz to help you focus on schoolwork. Anything that you need to do. So that's an excellent one. So it doesn't have to be a big chunk like this either. You can even have just a little clear quartz point or a little... Uh, tumbled crystal. So another one is smoky quartz. Smoky quartz is really good at helping to uh, kind of flush out that negative stressful energy. So this would be a good one to pair with balance essential oil, the smoky quartz. So apply some balance essential oil or diffuse it. Hold the smoky quartz and go outside and put your feet in the ground if you want. And the smoky quartz will really just help to flush out all of those uh, stressful feelings and Get them out of your system. So smoky quartz is a good one. And then we have black tourmaline. Black tourmaline is excellent for the root chakra. A lot of the time when we're stressed out, it's because our root chakra is out of balance. And the root chakra is um, all about feeling secure and not feeling anxious. It's all about, um, you know, basically security. So black tourmaline is good to help balance that root chakra. It's also very good to, again, help uh, ground your energy and to feel more stable. So black tourmaline is good. Then we have hematite. Hematite is really good at shielding the negativity. So especially if you're a sensitive person, an empath or something, hematite is really good to have around because it just kind of helps boost up your, um, your aura and your own personal energy, uh, your own personal energy field. So that way you're not absorbing as much outer stress and you're not taking on as much of other people's stress and crap into you. So this is a really, really good one to just kind of help build up your own energy field. Uh, actually, Michelle had shared a video with me about a girl talking about crystals and that she doesn't like saying crystals for protection because that makes you then feel like you're under attack and you're weak and you need protection. So she likes to word it as you're building up your energy, which I, I like that. That feels better. I would rather build up my energy and feel strong than feel like I need to be protected and weak because, I, you know, things are attacking me. But anyway, so hematite. And then finally, amethyst is another good one for stress relief. Uh, this is another one that is very, it's a little more stronger energy than, like rose quartz is a very soft, tender energy, and amethyst feels a little more uh, stronger or like powerful, I guess. Um, but this one's also really, really good for sleep. So if you're somebody who's stressed out and can't sleep, pair some Serenity essential oil with amethyst and you're good to go. Put the amethyst under your pillow, rub some Serenity on yourself, and go to sleep. <laughs> so those are some ways to use the crystals. Another way is you can, um, you know, so you pair them with the oils, hold the crystal when you're doing your breathing, 
You can even hold the crystal or wear the crystal on some jewelry when you're doing your walks through the woods. Uh, let's see, what else? Just even having the crystal near you can help. So, you know, placing a crystal, if you are particularly stressed when you're working on work, keep, you know, a rose quartz next to your computer and it'll help give you the calming energy. And also just having a crystal sitting out gives you a visual reminder, which I think is excellent. Usually when I look over and I see my rose quartz, it gives me a cue to, you know what, let's do a little bit of breathing. <laughs> nice breathing right now, even if I don't really need it. I'll see it and I'll close my eyes and I'll take a couple conscious breaths. Uh, so they serve as really good visual reminders of calming yourself down. Uh, you can put them in the bath water. Here's the thing though, some crystals you don't want to put into water. <clears throat> so like the hematite and the black tourmaline, you would not want to put those in water usually. Um, but rose quartz, clear quartz, amethyst, any quartz really, you can put into water. So you can put it into your bath. So incorporate that into your hour date with yourself, your weekly date. You know, put a couple drops of essential oil into your bathtub, put some candles, put a crystal into your bath water, and you're really to helping amplify that stress relief. And then you can also infuse your water. Again, you want to, ideally you want to use a tumbled stone. So, uh, you know, these soft kind of stones are tumbled. You can put a tumbled stone into your water. Again, there's plenty of lists. I'll try to find one and maybe link it into the um, event page here. There's lists on toxic crystals. So like hematite, you would not want to put hematite into your water. Uh, like Labradorite, that's another one that you wouldn't want to put in your water. But amethyst, clear quartz, rose quartz, those are good that you can put in your water, smoky quartz. And you literally, after maybe you want to program it, you know, with your intention of stress relief, just put it into your water and drink your water throughout the day. And the, um, the energy vibrational, the vibrational energy of the crystal will infuse into your water and you're literally drinking that calming energy. If you do have a crystal that, you know, that you'd like to drink, but it's not safe, you can always, if you have something like this, just set the crystal on top of it and leave it there for like 10, 15 minutes and it will absorb into it. Or you can, uh, you know, make a little crystal grid around your glass of water that way. That is always an option. So do you guys have any questions? I feel like I have rattled on and on. We're almost done. Thank you to those who have stuck with me. <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know. Um, so now I want to tell you how you can get some free stuff. So this month only, and I can't believe we're already like, I feel like we're pretty much done with the month of May. But this month only to anybody that enrolls on my doTERRA team, either as a wellness advocate or a wholesale customer, you with an enrollment kit, you get $50 in free credits to use towards any oils that you want, any products that you want. Um, can you rub oils onto the crystals without hurting them? Uh, it depends on the crystal. So like selenite is a very soft stone, which you don't want to get wet. So I personally would not put any oils onto selenite, but like rose quartz, yeah, you could totally rub oils onto your rose quartz. Um, or even use, if you have your essential oil smudge spray, you can spray your oils or, you know, spray the spray onto the crystal to cleanse your crystal that way as well. So I would just kind of be cautious of, um, you know, even this black tourmaline, it probably would be okay if I put oils on it, but just because of its texture, I wouldn't. Um, but yeah, I've totally put oils on my crystals. Excellent question. Um, but yeah, wholesale customer, wellness advocate, no pressure to sell. If you just want to get oils at a discount, that's awesome. Uh, we don't like to pressure anybody here on our team. Uh, but yeah, you enroll with an enrollment kit this month only. You get $50 in free credits to use on a future order, which is amazing. I mean, like, I'm trying to see. Like three oils would basically be like $50, these three. Or you could even get like four of, or five of the cheaper oils, the less, ex well not cheaper, I don't like that term, <laughs> less expensive oils. Uh, yeah, so $50 in free credits, and I will also send you an empty roller ball with crystals. These are excellent to make your own essential oil blends. You would just put drops of essential oil into here mixed with a carrier oil, like fractionated coconut oil, and then you have your own portable 
stress roller ball. Uh, you could put whatever oils you wanted into it. You know, if you want to put patchouli and wild orange, <clears throat> you could put patchouli and wild orange. But I'll include, um, I'll mail it to you. An empty roller ball with crystals in it. It'll either have amethyst, clear quartz, or rose quartz, or a combination of all three. Uh, so crystal infused roller blend, and then again, you can apply this, you know, the peace blend I like to apply on my chest, back of the neck, on my wrists, and breathe in. Uh, you can put it on the bottom of, of your feet before you go to bed, if you're sitting in your car. Oh, yay! I'm so excited! Yay! And you'll get the $50 in free credits, and I'll send you one of these. <laughs> yay! I love it. Um... Like, oh, I didn't want to say something about safety of the essential oils. Uh, citrus oils are not good for the sun. They do not pair. <laughs> they don't play well with the sun, which is kind of funny because they're citrus, which reminds you of the sun, so you'd think they'd get along. Uh, if you use citrus oils or you create a blend that has citrus oils in it, do not apply it anywhere where then you're going to be in the sun. So, you know, you would not want to apply wild orange or uh, lemon or anything to your chest and then go out into the sun because you could get really, really badly burnt. And that's not just doTERRA oils, that's any oil. Um, so you either should wait at least 12 hours after applying citrus oils to your skin before going into the sun, or you want to apply it somewhere where the sun isn't going to be, like, you know, if you're going to be wearing a t-shirt all day, apply it to your abdomen, the bottoms of your feet, something like that. Uh... I think that was all I was going to say. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you got some good, easy techniques and tips to uh, relieve some stress in your life. And remember, it just needs to be a, you know, a daily practice, a daily thing that you incorporate into your life. And the best thing I've ever done in my life <laughs> was pairing the doTERRA oils with crystals because it really, really just helps to bring your stress relief to the next level. Um, I don't know where I'd be if I didn't have my oils and my crystals. So, you're welcome, Haley. Yay! All right, if you guys think of any other questions, uh, by all means, jump into this event page or this photo, or this photo, this video, and leave a comment or a question or whatever, and I will post my um, doTERRA website so you can join. And also, if you have any questions, too, on which kit that you should join with or essential oils that you want to try, let me know. You're welcome, Miss Monica. All right. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later. Peace and love.